going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here this will be a spoiler preview for the upcoming horror slasher film stream which is directed and written by or co-written at least by michael levy who also wrote this alongside robert Proverta, Jason Levy, and Steven De La Sala. Now, it stars Jeffrey Combs, Charles Edwin Powell, Tim Reed, David Howard Thornton, D. Wallace, Danielle Harris, Tony Todd, and several others. Now, as the Keenans try to bring their family closer together, they unwittingly enter themselves into a game of life or death. With four deranged killers patrolling the halls of their hotel and competing for the most creative kills, the odds are definitely stacked against them. So, stream I would say is a competent slasher film it's not the best thing it's also not the worst but when it comes to indie films i was thoroughly impressed by what was on my screen and i wouldn't mind revisiting this film it was a competent and entertaining enough slasher film which also featured a lot of cool action sequences and very stellar practical effects when it came to the gore which i was completely geeking out over for it's been just the gore that was on display very in line with what we've seen in the terrifier films and it's not surprising considering it's from the same producers responsible for the last couple of terrifier films and the upcoming third one now the keenan family have been a bit distant the father, Roy, in particular, feels like he's been neglecting his children. He works a lot and doesn't seem to make time for his loved ones. His wife, Elaine, decides to randomly take a family trip to a resort they went to in the past because I guess they have PTO like that. Lucky them. Their two kids, Taylor and Kevin, join them. Kevin is a child streamer for gaming. He loves Wi-Fi. And Taylor is a teenage girl with a bad case of sticky fingers. All of these characters are pretty bare bones, but still likable. And the story highlights their dynamics enough for me to invest in them as our group of protagonists and the danger they don't know about. Stream makes up for its thin family by keeping us a few steps ahead of the Keenans. We learn more about the resort shenanigans before the Keenans do, which keeps you on edge when they wander this resort or interact with certain individuals and make some of the inevitable deaths strike a nerve. Our supporting characters are here for what you'd expect, body count. All those seasoned horror fans who have seen the franchises everyone has appeared in might crack a smile for these characters when they appear, although they don't really amount to anything significant to the story. Stream features a brutal street it features a few brutal kills i would say an arcade sequence being my favorite a sick game of tic-tac-toe is another standout as well we're even given a solid chase scene where killers named player two and player three battle it out against another guest that sequence that i'm talking about there that chase scene actually builds to a highly effective bait and switch moment stream's biggest setback story-wise when it comes to this screenplay is how it seems desperate to drive home how important it is to spend time with your family it gives the film much needed stakes but some dialogue bits just come off a bit preachy and the exposition dumping featured in the final act isn't needed when stream makes it quite obvious what is going on as the story is progressing we're almost we're already at the finish line waiting for the characters to pick back up and it doesn't really hit as well as the story wants it to because of that when we get to the final act and you're having to sit through exposition dumping michael levy's direction makes stream a suspenseful experience once the terror kicks in lackluster opening sequence aside and i do mean lackluster <laughs> stream kept me engaged sure i've seen better performances from danielle harris but she was still fine in her role as elaine the stars had enough chemistry to make the family convincing, but Charles Powell and Sidney Malika were the standouts. Powell does a wonderful job at selling Roy's emotions and his dynamic and chemistry with uh, his on-screen daughter, Sidney, what made their relationship very convincing, made me want to root for them to get that bond repaired. And of course, it ultimately leads to some heartbreak in a lot of ways. And you'll see what I mean when the film releases next week. So when it comes to david howard thornton i just want to point him out really quick when it comes to the performances i could tell who he was just from the mannerisms this person was having having a lot more fun when it came to the kills compared to the others they just had this art the clown vibe is all i'll say and then when i looked up the cast and saw that that exactly who was who i thought it was which is david howard thornton i was like i'm not surprised you'll be able to tell who david is because they just seem much more sadistic and the mannerisms of the killers really make up for the lackluster costume designs of them all in my opinion because i wasn't terrified by any of their looks but what kept them terrifying were the mannerisms and the stars they were chasing the characters selling the terror of the sequences that makes up for the lackluster costume design like i mentioned the practical effects thought those are really well done the score also adds and heightens the suspense at times when it came to the pacing i want to say 
I, f I did feel while the tic-tac-toe sequence was was a standout, it also went on for a bit too long. And when I say it went on a bit too long, I'm thinking about the fact that it featured a nothing character when a previous character who was much more significant to the story is killed and their sequence felt kind of like an afterthought, but you've wasted all this time on this tic-tac-toe sequence on a nothing character. It just felt out of place in that regard. And some, some some stuff, again, just went on for far too long, in my opinion. I would give Stream a solid 6 out of 10. Again, it's a competent slasher film. It's not the great. It's not the greatest thing. It's also not the worst thing. It has a straightforward screenplay. The overall presentation, of course, isn't some masterpiece. But in terms of indie horror films, it's not bad. It's competent enough. And I think if you go out to theaters to watch it, you'll have fun with it. But again, I will say, do not expect anything over the top grand. Not anything like that. I would say if I would compare it to the two Terrifiers, it's more similar to the first Terrifier. Whereas Terrifier 2 is a vast improvement. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications. Remember this video. In the description, I have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.